How's it going guys? Welcome back to the channel Make Money Trucking and I, I wanted to go over what I think is pretty crazy and that is prices of the 2013 and 14 GT500s. So I did end up buying a 2021 and I am very happy about that but I just wanted to kind of jump on the screen and show you guys some crazy prices of 2013 and 2014 GT500s and kind of let you know the reason why I kind of skipped on with those. And I'm kind of wondering, is this sustainable? Like how much longer are these prices going to be at this level before they go down, if they ever do? Or did I just miss out on a great opportunity uh, getting in at a cheaper price, even though it sounds high right now? So we'll see. All right, guys, so I pulled up <clears throat> uh, car gurus and just gonna kind of look over some prices on 13 and 14 model uh, GT500s and kind of you know explain kind of what I'm talking about on these um, you know I was looking to buy one and pull the trigger on one once they got closer to forty thousand dollars because you used to find a really good clean like one owner low mileage example around like forty five or fifty thousand and as you see um, you know here's like the cheapest one I could find is forty four thousand you know this 2013 on the right here and it's got 50,000 miles which is kind of a lot and you go down and this one's 45 as well this one looks like it's in a lot better shape but it has 80,000 miles so as you can see prices have actually has have gone you know up quite a bit on these over the last you know since the craziness started you know about a year or so ago um, they have calmed down or cooled off a little bit like I was seeing a lot of like 55,000 for, you know, this uh, type of mileage, you know, 50,000 for 62,000 miles. I found a couple of cars that were about 50,000 with uh, around 20 to 25,000 miles. So yeah, um, these prices are kind of crazy in my opinion. Uh, you know, they're not as high as, you know, they're not too crazy high, but they're definitely, you know, 10 or $15,000 more than what I think they should be or what they were two years ago um, you know because the these cars were going down towards they're getting closer to 40,000 because I know I was I told myself if they got down to 40 I'd definitely buy one I found a couple and then all of a sudden once the craziness happened they dri they dipped down maybe a little bit before 40 or below 40 and then they skyrocketed back up to these prices now and now you're looking at 50 grand just to get like a half decent one. And these ones aren't too bad, you know, 53 for 22,000 miles. But, uh, you know, you get a really good example, like under 20,000 miles, you're definitely going to have to spend, um, let's see here, you know, 55,000. And then, you know, this one unfortunately looks like on the left here, <clears throat> it definitely looks like it's been, you know, potentially modded and, you know, if you if you don't if you want you know a stock car that hasn't been molested, this 2013 ain't too bad for you know 55,000 for under 20,000 miles. These are getting a little bit better as far as you know quality of car. And then also another problem is like if let's choose one to pick on like 56,000. All right, so you know this one here has one owner. But a lot of times you'll find these cars and they've got six owners and they've only got like 30,000 miles on them. And you're like, what the heck is going on? Why do these have, you know, so many owners? And that's probably, you know, not a good car you want. So another crazy thing is that when I was looking at these, they, uh, I called a couple of banks, uh, a couple of credit unions and asked them how much, you know, they had approved me on, on a 13 or 14. And I gave them a car that was $50,000. And it was um, at a dealership for fifty thousand. I think it had twenty one thousand miles on it. It was a decent car, but it kind of had some weird stuff about it. But it was clean title and only had like one or two owners, I think. And the credit unions wouldn't even finance me. Uh, they said they'd only finance up to thirty seven or thirty eight thousand dollars. And if that tells you anything, that should tell you what the true market value is. But then other credit unions would do, or uh, banks would do up to you know, uh, 60,000. So yeah, I mean, you can't even get finance for the amount of what they're asking for these. You know, this one for 58,000, 9,000 miles, that's a good example, but it's, it's 60,000. 
and that's why I end up making my decision on my car just buying a new one because like okay well you can get a used one or you can get a brand new one for you know I know it's twenty thousand dollars more but then these are overpriced by twenty thousand dollars or fifteen thousand dollars so it feels like you know, you're overpaying for a 13 or 14 model so why not I mean might as well I guess just uh buy a new one have warranty no one has driven it there's no weird things and like I said I was looking at some of these and they had like six seven owners or they had like some weird vehicle history which wasn't like an accident or you know they had a bunch of air freshers in the car which is like what the heck is it flooded or was it smoked in so there's a lot of weird things with them so you know I don't know you guys tell me you think this is sustainable I don't think so is it gonna go lower or is this a deal is this a deal right now and in a year or two they're gonna be you know 70,000 so let me know and uh, I'll see you guys on the next one thanks